Hey everyone, I'm joined again by David Cantor of realworldtech.com. We have another video that should be up by now talking about what is a CUDA core and does it exist? It's a bit of an existential question. That's right. In that one. And now we're going to be talking about the, uh, the memory and flash market. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks-focused build, which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. So David works as uh, an analyst, I guess, is accurate, right, for a descriptor? I spend time analyzing things, uh, you know, and uh, but, you know, when it comes to computing, you know, obviously I pay a lot of attention to CPUs, to GPUs. Right. But at the end of the day, we also need to, you know, the, the, the phrase is always feed the beast, right? We've got to get the memory, we've got to get the storage, and you got to bring it all together. And so, you know, NAND is something that is undergoing a bit of a revolution. And so what we're seeing in terms of the shortage of NAND is more of a consequence of that. And so for a long time, uh, the basic NAND cell was shrunk at every generation. Right. And so the, the problem we ran into is eventually it got to be there weren't a large number of electrons representing each bit. You know, you might have 10, 20, right. 60, 100. And it got to the point where the statistics of something going wrong made it very difficult to scale. And so the, the industry decided that they would go in 3D mm. in the third dimension, just sort of like with FinFETs, right, where we went for vertical transistors right. to get better control. Same sort of deal. Um, and so we have this new 3D NAND, and the rough idea is that you take uh, rather than having a really small planner cell, you make a bigger planner cell, but then you drop 24, 32, 64, 96 Layers. of them on top right. of each other. Right, exactly. And so, you know, Samsung was really uh, the first guys to do a lot of research on this. Did they do 64 layer? Is that what they're up to now? Yeah. So right now everyone's doing 64 layer and that's pretty economical. And the real challenge is that, you know, of course, the first time you do anything, you don't do it quite as well right. as it could be. And so there's some scaling that needs to happen as you get experience with these things. And so the early 32 layer that Samsung did was not cost competitive with Planner NAND. And so the problem is you had this situation where everyone, you know, Intel, my, Intel and Micron, Samsung, Hynix, and uh, Toshiba and SanDisk, you know, needed to make some investment decisions about what kind of factories are they going to build. Right. And everyone knew that 32 layer was not quite going to work out, but it had better reliability, better endurance. And so Samsung was selling it into like data center applications. And ultimately this plays back into price and things like that too, where yeah. we talk about for our audience, consumer facing price of SSDs and memory. Yeah. And uh, in the, I guess the way I look at it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess my understanding is if the memory makers or the NAND makers mm -hmm. are refactoring their facilities or their process or whatever yeah. new processes, then that's taking part of the assembly offline yeah. during that period. So that would, presumably, that would lower your supply for the period you're refactoring. Yeah, well, and that's just assuming that they don't add factory space. And right. I think in a lot of cases they did, but the catch is that in the early days, their yields were just not as good right. as they were. And so you had this combination of uh, more advanced and expensive technology, uh, lower initial yields, and the density was not, was sort of not as much of an advantage as you would hope at 32 layer because, you know, remember I said they went from a really small planner cell to a bigger cell but step on top of each other. So, yeah, the net effect was in essence, we reduced the amount of NAND in the marketplace, but everyone agreed that 64 layer NAND was definitely a win over any planner NAND. Sure. And so at that point, once everyone, once all of the, the four vendors or manufacturers are on 3D NAND and they've got their yields, we're going to see supply go back up to normal. And I think what we will probably see is prices going down. And, and, and you know, 
You're probably maybe a little bit better tuned into this than I am, but I think that's what we've seen in the last couple months. Yeah, SSDs, in the very least, have not gone up in the way that memory has. Yeah. Like DRAM. And uh, it's definitely, it's stagnated, I think, because when we were putting together sales guides for end of year last year, Mm -hmm. memory was never on sale. I mean, it was on sale like twice. Yeah. And the sale was $10. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But SSDs, they weren't on sale. They're were, they were typically always at the same price as they were the year before. So it didn't go up. Yeah. But it didn't really come down. I think it, it might be taking a slight dip down now, finally. Yeah. Which uh, I guess it's, it sounds like you're saying part of that is the industry coming to consensus on a 64 layer. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, they'll be moving to 96 layer in the future. Right. And then there are other options to give you better density. So you can do uh, three bits per cell. Right. Uh, which is actually kind of crazy when you look at the mechanics of how it works. Um, and it makes your write endurance worse. But, you know, there's definitely a lot of applications where that's that's really uh, a fine trade-off to make. Um, so is, with uh, TLC versus VNAND, I guess, uh, if we're talking, because TLC, MLC, SLC, those are all planar. Well, no, no, no. Or so that just refers to how many bits, bits are in cell, the cell. Right? And so the, you know, the right way to think about it, and this is a little bit of a simplification, mm-hmm. is in the SLC case, all you kind of want to know is, is it on or is it off? Right. Whereas You're with, checking a voltage state for the bit or something? Right, exactly. It's kind of, is it a one or is it a zero, right. high or low? Whereas with MLC, it's more like, well, okay, now you've got four states you need to right. check. So is it, you know, low, middle low? middle high or really high, right? And then you can imagine with TLC, now you've got eight states and it's even more complicated. And so, you know, the real, um, you know, NAND is a little bit more complicated than DRAM from a buying perspective because it's, you know, there's density, there's price, there's performance, but then you have the endurance. And so all of these techniques to cram more bits in a cell make the right endurance worse and smaller cells make the right endurance worse. Right, yeah. So, you know, part of what happened is with the, you know, VNAND or, or whatever you want to call it, 3D NAND, is everyone said, well, now we've got these bigger cells. Let's go take that endurance that we got and use it to go to TLC. Right, okay. And, you know, for again, for some people, that's exactly the right choice. Um, but you know, some folks will really want a lot of write endurance and that may not be the best thing for them. Sure. So then the, the SSD market in terms of pricing, flash market, uh, sounds like it should be recovering or stabilizing. Yeah. The memory market does not seem like there's an end in sight to the current price trends. You know, I think we were talking about this before, how much memory did we pay for our 16 gigabyte right, yeah. kits in our systems? Yeah. And, you know, I think I got in at like a hundred, maybe eighty dollars, something like that. Right. Those are the good old days. Yeah. And uh, you know, I have a hard time seeing that happen uh, again for a while. I, you know, ultimately, memory is a commodity, and so it's all a question of supply and demand. And really, when you get down to it, uh, you know, the mobile phone market is growing. Yeah. The server market's definitely growing. And there are only three real suppliers. Right, exactly. Two, depending on what kind of memory you're buying, I guess, too. We're right. talking graphics memory or something like that. Right. Well, no, no, I think they all do graphics memory. But well, they do HBM2, HBM2, I guess. Yeah. Because yeah. so, you've got uh, you have Samsung, who does HBM2 on Vega cards presently. Hynix is more or less capable of doing it at this point. Yep. And I don't think Micron's got anything right now. Yeah, so Micron had a very interesting strategy. Uh, And if you remember the the Xeon Phi, it uses hybrid memory cube. And Mm -hmm. so that was something that Micron put together. Uh, And it is proprietary, and so it hasn't caught on quite as much. But it has some benefits relative to HBM, but just, you know, it, again, did not really catch on super widely. Uh, Although, you know, there's a lot of supercomputers, a lot of networking and FPGAs using it. So it's just, it's, you know, not going to make it into graphics. Yeah, different market. Yeah. Um, and so I think sooner or later, Micron will get around to doing HBM. It's just a, a question of when, frankly. Yeah. Uh, well, and then DDR4 prices too. Yeah. Being 
as a desktop component, if you're building your own system, right, it's kind of a low on the totem pole for what the suppliers want to focus on. That's right. Margin is going to be better on enterprise and server. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of cases where, and not just that, but, you know, if you think about someone the size of Apple or, or Dell, they obviously get way better discounts yeah. than what Newegg or, or we do right. at the end of the day. So, you know, if, if, you, if you happen to find a screaming deal on memory, you should let us know, let your friends yeah. know, uh, or maybe just hoard it just for yourself it. And, <laughs> and sell it to your friends. I don't know. But, you know, I, I think we'll see, see SSDs coming down. And then, you know, there's also, you, you have Intel's Optane, mm. or, you know, 3D Crosspoint. And, uh, you know, in some ways, that's maybe one of the things I'm more optimistic about. I think, you know, they still have some kinks to work out in it. Uh, the write endurance, again, seems to be an issue there uh, as a DRAM replacement. Mm. But as an SSD, that stuff is screaming fast and really amazing. But... Uh, I mean, I just got to throw it out there that I am totally looking forward to like a day when I can get like enough uh, 3D Crosspoint that, you know, I can put the boot drive right. in 3D Crosspoint and, you know, like truly instant on system and, you know, just hold everything in memory. I mean, yeah. that would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, Intel, I guess, they're pushing for it. They yeah. have their Optane dims they want to do. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm really. Waiting That'll be for. really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, recapping. Yeah. Flash and SSD market kind of stabilizing, slightly yep. improved, and then uh, no ends in sight for DDR4. That's right. So yeah. Treat it like cryptocurrency. Buy it and hoard it. I guess. And, yeah. <laughs> and end up with a thousand percent gains next year. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm not, I, 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 I don't know about the thousand percent gains, but definitely if you get a good deal on it, buy it and yeah. hoard it. And, you know, I mean, I think it's always interesting to look at new technologies, whether it's 3D Crosspoint or someone else's NVDIMs. I mean, mm. I think uh, one of the things that we're starting to see is a lot more innovation in memory, right. just because some of the other factors that we use to get to performance are, are slowing down a bit. So, you know, HBM2 is a great example. Yeah, but that makes sense. Yeah, you know, I think for, from a consumer standpoint, you hit the nail on the head. You know, SSDs will probably come down in price or, you know, maybe even if they don't come down in price, we'll at least get better density. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe what's one terabyte today will be two terabytes or or whatnot. But, uh, you know, just uh, remember that, that you know, DRAM is actually expensive. Yeah, very. <laughs> and we'll talk about that more in the future as well. But yeah. if you want more of uh, David Cantor's content, check the link in the description below or realworldtech.com. And thank you for joining me again. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see Great you all next time.